Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little more interesting, which we'll be looking at a power inverter. Not just a regular inverter that you would use to convert DC to AC power, but a grid tie inverter. And what this does, it supplements power to the grid. So essentially it takes DC power and transfers that to AC that can be used in conjunction with the existing power in the house circuit. So I got this one on Amazon, and this is the 500 watt version, so it's not a large one. Let's go ahead and open it up. So this is how it comes packaged. Pretty nice. So it looks like we get two manuals but they appear to be different. Product introduction and technical parameters and installation guide troubleshooting. It looks like some good valuable information here to learn how all this stuff works. Well that's nice. So then we also have a power cord. You can see the type this is. So on a normal inverter you normally would be plugging into it but here you're plugging out of it into the wall. And then we have the inverter itself and it's carefully packaged in a plastic bag looks like and this is what it looks like so it's pretty much a full metal aluminum body here so this is the company Lissos 500 watt on grid power inverter which also means a grid tie inverter DC to AC pure sine wave and the frequency that it will support so here's the different kinds that you can get the DC input from 11 to 28 so you would get this one if you're going to use 12 volt solar panels so this says right here 12 volts and you would get this one if you're using 24 volt but the more important number is right here and this is the voltages that it can handle or works optimally in and then we have our AC output 90 to 130 or 180 to 260 so depending on where you live you will get that option so they have everybody covered with whatever options you need and I decided to go with this voltage range because I know that anytime you convert power it's always better to convert it as close as possible to the source output so the only reason that matters is that it's more efficient all the way around it's more efficient in here it's definitely more efficient on the input because if your voltage is double your wire gauge can be twice as small basically meaning as you don't need a thick of a cable to carry the amperage this is why I went with the higher voltage input now I didn't buy this to set it up to my existing solar system I don't even have solar panels at this point right now all I am is just curious of how this thing would work and even if it'll make a difference for me to go ahead and invest in some solar panels to feed this thing but in this video we're gonna give it a power source see how much this thing puts out and kind of see what kind of results we'll get from it alright so let's look at the input side we have a positive a negative and we also do have a ground screw here so if you wanted to ground out this whole casing just in case of any kind of shorts they have a dedicated bolt that's definitely nice so it looks like we have a power light here and a pretty large fan to cool the unit off and on the other side we have on and off switch and an AC output socket and the bottom is quite clean and we have some mounting options here well, that's nice you can mount this on a wall and there is a sticker with some more info here and it looks like normal power is 460 watts but up to 500 and I'm guessing as it warms up it's gonna you know taper off a bit so in the manual we have specification of the grid tie inverters and there's quite a bit of information here and what I wanted to show you is the peak inverter efficiency if you get the 11 to 28 volt one your peak efficiency is only 80 to 83 percent if you go to the 22 volt one then your efficiency jumps up quite a bit from 85 to 90 all right, so for the next part, we're gonna hook this thing up and see how it puts power back into the grid. So I'm gonna use this 40 volt lithium battery I got from some electric tools. We got a meter here. We're gonna see the battery voltage and monitor that. I got some cables here that are quite thick. I'm not sure, it looks like about 10 gauge, maybe eight. And then we're gonna output from here into this kilowatt meter, which is gonna show us how many watts this thing is putting out. And by the way, my house voltage is quite high at 125. So this thing is gonna to have to boost that a bit, and obviously it can because it goes up to 130 in order to feed itself in. And not only that, it has to match the frequency of the line, which is actually exactly 60 hertz here. All right, so I'm gonna hook everything up and then we'll be back. So everything is hooked up and it's a little bit janky here. I had to use some alligator clips to finish the connection between this battery, but we should be okay there. So positive and negative connect to the terminals here on this side, and then our AC output cord goes into the watt meter and back into the grid. And one thing I noticed is that it's drawing some power just sitting there, about half a watt, and I'm guessing that is the feedback or at least the standby power for this thing. I'm not sure if the DC is drawing anything because I'm not measuring that right now. But in any case, so let's go ahead and hit the power button here and see what happens. All right, so it powered on and the light was red and then it turned green and now it's blinking. So I'm guessing it is pumping power. Yes, it is. So there's 360, 400 watts going back into the grid right now. And this light is starting to blink faster as more power goes through it. 
So we got 531 right now. Wow, it's pushing itself to the limit. So I'm guessing it's going to go back down once this thing heats up. And our battery voltage is dropping quite quick. So I'm not going to let this run too long because I don't want to overheat anything over here. So I'm going to let it run just for a bit and it's still pumping 520 and obviously as this voltage drops it's also going to drop. So yeah, it's pushing pretty hard and the fan's not on yet so it's not hot enough. But with that kind of wattage I think I'm going to go ahead and turn it off and check all my terminals here. So we started at 40 volts, at 40.1 I think. It was practically 40 and you guys can see that drop quite quick. Okay, so the terminals are warm, but they're not hot. So it looks like I have a good connection there, so I don't think I should worry too much. So with about 500 watts pushing into my grid, I should be able to see a difference on my meter. So I'm really curious about that. So let's go out to the meter and uh, we'll see if it makes any difference. All right, so we're at the meter and we can see how fast it's spinning. Not very quick. Let's see if we can maybe stop it. Go ahead, bro. Okay, so it's on and it should kick in here shortly. Okay, it's definitely stopped. And it's going backwards now. Seems to be speeding up. Let's see how much wattage we're putting out. So we got 500 watts going back. And it looks like it's spinning backwards quite a little bit. So that's with all the draw that's at the house right now. So I'm going to turn it off. And there it goes. It goes straight back the normal way. Alright, so I turned it back on and it's still pumping about 500 watts. So total runtime has been maybe about 10 minutes or so now. And our voltage quite drastically fell on this battery, so it's drawing quite a bit of amperage. So yeah, it's showing us only one dot, so it's really pulling hard. 500 watts to pull out of that is probably too much for this. It draws as much as it can, like it doesn't have a limit. So when you put the solar panel on it, it's good because, you know, it's trying to squeeze out everything it can. But if you put batteries on it, it's gonna, you know, push as hard as it can. That's why it's pushing out 500 watts. So yeah, we can see the voltage is dropping very quickly. But in any case, we get the idea of what this grid tie inverter does. So now we just have to figure out how to create enough DC voltage for this thing from the sun or whatever other means, wind, to feed back into the grid. And I'm definitely excited to explore that. And the reason I am is because where I live here, our power is 33 cents per kilowatt. So it gets quite expensive for electricity here. So yeah, if it puts out this kind of wattage all the time, it's going to get warm and it is warm now and the fans are on and I can feel the cool coming out of this side so it's pulling in through here and pushing it out so depending on how fast this blinks is how much power goes in so the slower it blinks the less power the faster it blinks the more power and when you first turn it on you get a red light and then a solid green and then you get the blink indicating the amount of power going in so it started with about 100 and then it's two three four four hundred now and almost 500 so you can see how fast that blinks so if you unplug the output and try to turn it on, it'll never turn on. So this inverter is never made to work without the grid power. So if the grid power goes out, the inverter doesn't work either because it gets an okay from the grid and matches the hertz and then it activates and, and starts pushing power. And the reason for that is that if the grid goes out, this thing is not trying to power the whole grid because obviously it can't do that. Because don't forget with this thing, you actually connect to the grid. So whatever happens in the grid will happen to this thing. This is why it's smart enough not to be on when there is no grid power. So let's go through the settings real quick. So the power is ramping up. I just turned it on. Let's go to volts. So we got 126.6 volts, which is a little bit higher than our house voltage, which was at 125. And so the reason it has to do that is because it pushes power in to the grid. So it heightens the voltage up just a bit. And our hertz are still at 60, 60.1. So. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video and kind of see how a uh, grid tie inverter works. If you want to pick up one of these for yourself, I think it's a great starter where you can play around with it. I'm going to have some links in the description, so check that out. It's around $100, so it's worth it for... You you know just investigating or just kind of get an idea of how this stuff works and if you enjoyed this video then hit that like button so if you like videos like this and you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button to see more and as always thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one peace